Greetings folks and welcome to Bob of All Trades. To your right is the Electronics Mech G3. Some of these Electronics laptops are the most difficult laptops to review. The Mech G3 is very challenging because it is very feature rich and I spend most of my time in videos like this explaining what these features are and how they work for the user. What makes it even more challenging this time is that I have two of them that I'm gonna wrap up in this single video. But wait, it gets more challenging. This one has the 2070 Super Max P. This one here has the 2080 Super Max Q. And on top of that, this model here has liquid metal on the CPU so we can see what sort of differences are there should you desire that upgrade for yourself. And for a different perspective of these two laptops in review, check Owner Disown's channel as these laptops came from him. And then when I'm done reviewing them, they will get set back to electronics. All right, folks, are you ready? This is my attempt at reviewing two electronics Mac G3s. Let's rock and roll. Inside is the fastest i7-10875H 8-core CPU that I am aware of with a maximum long-term power limit of 120 watts. The two graphics card options for the G3 are the RTX 2070 Super Max P and the RTX 2080 Super Max Q, both with ElectroBoost for higher than spec performance. Then you have your replaceable parts such as two memory DIMMs with up to 64 gigabytes at 2666 memory speeds, or spend 25 more dollars for the faster 2933 megahertz speed upgrade. The Wi-Fi card is the AX201 Wi-Fi 6. We have two M.2 drives for storage and a 94 watt hour battery. The G3 as well as the new Max 15 and 17 have a MUX switch with three modes switchable in the BIOS. Most gaming laptops that feature an Intel CPU and NVIDIA GPU have NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics only, also known as MS Hybrid. This mode is still intact for your convenience and will be the default setting. Expect 5-7 to seven hours on battery. However, for the best gaming performance, switch to the dedicated GPU mode. This will remove the bottleneck associated with having to run the video signal through the integrated graphics. Now your laptop will function more like a desktop while granting you features such as fast sync. Expect two hours on battery here and a physically hotter bottom panel, so avoid this while unplugged for your comfort sanity. For the best and more consistent battery performance, Select the integrated graphics to shut off the dedicated GPU. This will extend your battery time by 15%, giving you 6 to 8 hours unplugged. I'll have a sub 4 minute video talking about the MUX switch and why your laptop should have one linked below. The only display option on the G3 is a Full HD 240Hz IPS type panel. LG owns the rights to call IPS panels IPS panels. Both of our review units calibrated identical at 99% standard RGB and 78% Adobe RGB. Brightness between the two was 317 nits versus 320 nits. You cannot tell the two apart. Now, how about that webcam and microphone? The 720p webcam and microphone are located at the bottom of the bezel. Ultimately not ideal. Keyboard strokes do work and sound just like this. And when using Windows Hello, there's a chance that it may cut off the top of your head and... Johnny! Dude, do you mind? What are you doing? Making a TikTok video, bro. What's up? Ports on the left-hand side, we have a Kensington lock, a USB 3.1, and a separate mic and headphone port. On the right, we have an SD card reader and two USB 3.1s. On the rear, we have a four-lane Thunderbolt 3 that will connect to the dedicated graphics card with a USB-C to display port adapter. We have HDMI, LAN port, and a barrel power port. Powering all configurations of the Mech G3 is a 230 watt power supply unit. The G3 feels premium with an aluminum lid and keyboard deck. It weighs about 4.8 pounds and is under an inch thin. Their covert line is slick without any branding, but you can apply a dbrand skin to your G3 should you wish to spice things up. I recommend MS Hybrid or the integrated graphics modes when using this on your lap, otherwise it'll get uncomfortably warm. Windows Hello facial recognition is doing its job quickly, despite me wearing a camera in my mouth to film this. The glass Windows Precision touchpad is smooth and gestures nicely. Double tap the top left hand corner to disable, but one of the review units rattles when lightly pressed. The Mech G3 has a mechanical keyboard, hence the name Mech. The brown switches have two millimeters of travel, and as someone who's not a fan of mechanical keys mainly due to noise, I have to admit, this is pretty awesome. 
the keys are large and with a numeric pad it's fairly cramped and lacks an enter key. Above this is the power button and the Q key button. More on this little gem shortly. Next, I want to discuss three more BIOS features that you'll definitely appreciate. The function key, undervolting, and memory tuning. The function keys can be set up so you do not have to press the FN key in conjunction with the F keys. There's also undervolting in the BIOS at a maximum of an 80 millivolt undervolt. For the integrity of the following performance testing, however, I set both laptops to a 50 millivolt undervolt. 10th generation Intel CPUs are pretty tight and 80 millivolt will be too much for some. There's also memory tuning and it's extensive. I still recommend the 2933 MHz memory upgrade for $25, but should you wish to try your luck tuning your memory, have at it. During trial and error, a black screen is easily fixed by unplugging your CMOS battery cable from the motherboard for 5 minutes, plug it back in, turn on your laptop, and your BIOS will have reset. Next, let's talk about ElectroBoost, QKey, and the power limits while gaming. Starting with ElectroBoost, this is very important. ElectroBoost is not a video BIOS mod, but a physical modification performed to the motherboard from the factory to essentially trick the GPU into pulling more wattage for more performance. This cannot be monitored with software. This will allow the 2080 Super Max Q to boost up to 115 watts and the 2070 Super Max P beyond 115 watts. Average performance gains from this mod on the 2080 Super Max Q were only about 5% and the 2070 Super Max P were between 10 and 15%. The Q key is a physical button next to the power button on the keyboard deck. By default, it'll switch between three modes. Beast mode allows the CPU to stretch its legs and both power limits set to 120 watts. The GPU will have ElectroBoost activated for maximum performance. Great for the most demanding titles and video editing, for example. Expect temperatures here to be at their maximum typical of what you see on screen. Game mode limits the CPU's power limits to 45 watts while retaining ElectroBoost. This is a sensible mode for nearly all games to achieve maximum performance at the expense of thermals, of course. Game mode, CPU temp should average 5 degrees Celsius cooler over beast mode. In both beast and game modes, you can select to have your fans run at max speed should you wish. Maximum fan acoustics top out at around 50 decibels. Otherwise, the G3 does a good job of getting to max fans without the need to activate this under these two modes, but it's still nice to have. Office mode limits the CPU's power limits to 35 watts, and the GPU will run at its stock spec. This is an awesome mode because you can achieve some amazing fan acoustic performance between 43 and 44 decibels while gaming at load and matching the competition's performance doing so. Within office mode, you can tick the eco mode box and further drop CPU's power limits to 25 watts. However, that Q key can also operate as a max fan speed button by selecting the fan boost option within the BIOS, and then you can control your performance profiles within the software's user interface. This is a great way to achieve the highest thermal performance by maxing your fan speed within office mode. It's all about the options and quality of life. The 2080 model has liquid metal on its CPU. This was the way it was sent to me and only to showcase its usefulness should there be any. This is just as much of a science experiment for me as it is for electronics to watch as we verify whether or not liquid metal is a viable option. The reality is this really only helped during CPU only loads to gain a small clock speed worth about 4-5%. to Overall CPU behavior between the two models is slightly different beyond thermal paste, however. Since the 2080 model technically pulls less wattage, when both CPU and GPU are under the same load, the CPU has the ability to consume more wattage and therefore offer increased clock speed. While this can help produce higher minimum frame rates, it's something very few owners would encounter. And as you clearly saw in this small test, the frame rate between both graphics cards was nearly identical. Don't worry. We are going to talk about that at the end of the video. Remember earlier how I said the i7 10875H has a 120 watt long term power limit? It certainly does, and like most gaming laptops, its CPU performance is at its best when it's not loaded with the graphics card. 
making it great for CPU-intensive tasks such as handbrake and video editing. With the 50 millivolt undervolt, it's pulling around 100 watts, temps in the 90s obviously, and clock speed around 4 GHz across 16 threads. DPC latency tests for real-time audio would typically pass with rare occasions of 1.6 millisecond spikes that happen twice while testing too many times to count. The THX Spatial Audio and its 4-watt speakers lack bass but sound better than their previous gaming laptops. Have a listen. Alright folks, I played a lot more titles behind the scenes and I've done a lot of testing on both of these laptops, but to save myself 50 hours worth of editing and making a review that's 30 minutes long that people are not going to watch from start to finish, I can confidently tell you that the 2070 Super Max P is a better bang for the buck than the 2080 Max Q Super. And that is not anyone's fault, but really NVIDIA's here. The wattage that these GPUs require on desktop to really stretch their legs where you can actually see the performance difference is double of what we get inside of laptops. And now we have a weaker tiered GPU in the 2070 that's technically pulling more wattage than the higher spec tier and therefore the balance in performance is nearly identical, making it difficult to justify the 2080. Now don't get me wrong. Benchmarks favor this, and many titles do favor this by a few percent, but is that worth the extra money to you? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. 2019, I liked the 1660 Ti, and I liked the 2070 Max-P. And for 2020, I liked the 2060 with Electro Boost at 115 watts, and I like the 2070 and 2070 Super Electro Boosted. Anything else in between, it's not that it's not justified, but then we have to look at the total package of what the laptop offers versus just the frame rate performance alone. But when it comes to the premium build and performance in a very sleek package, everything that the G3 offers, is pretty much unmatched for the price. So let me know what your thoughts are down below. That's gonna do it. This was my review of two Mac G3s. I'm Bob Voltrades, and I'll see you in the next video.